All right, so we're looking at week two of comma lessons, and we got four little rules that we're going to go over today. All of them are pretty similar, though, so once you figure out how to do one, the rest shouldn't be too tough. The first one is use commas to set off phrases that are not essential to the meaning of the sentence. Not essential means that they're not needed. The sentence could do without them. So I've given you three examples here, and I've put the non-essential or maybe essential phrases in italics. The first one says he smiled broadly, comma, waiting for teammates to congratulate him. Could have totally reversed this and said, waiting for teammates to congratulate him, comma, he smiled broadly. But the point of it is, this whole waiting for the teammates to congratulate him, it's not essential to the sentence that he smiled broadly. Him smiling broadly is not affected by the teammates and him waiting for them. If the non-essential clause comes in the middle of the sentence somewhere, we're going to have to put commas on either side of it. So here you can see Madison, which is in the south central part of the state, is the capital of Wisconsin. It's just bonus information. You don't need it to know that Madison is the capital of Wisconsin. That makes it non-essential, and that means we're going to place commas around it. Now, sometimes a, a phrase might seem like it might be non-essential because of the way it sounds, but it actually does need to be there. And this is an example of that. Tourists who are not fond of cold weather should think twice about vacationing in Alaska. Now, the who are not fond of cold weather thing might seem like it's non-essential, but if you take it out of the sentence, suddenly it says, Tourists should think twice about vacationing in Alaska. That's still a sentence, but it doesn't mean the same thing. So that makes that phrase in the middle essential. And since it's essential, we're not going to put commas around it. Interjections. This is probably something you learned in elementary school. Those are the sorts of words that you shout or you just say. They're usually one, maybe two syllables, and they're very brief. If you have them, you're going to go ahead and put a comma right after them. So, well, I guess that's the end. Or, oh, I see. Yes and no would also be considered inter interjection. So like, yes, I'm coming to the party. You put a comma after yes. Parenthetical expressions are sort of those little asides. They're not needed at all, but it's the way we talk and it's sometimes the way we write. And so I've given you two examples here. He is, in fact, going to join us. Again, because it's in the middle of the sentence, we're going to have to surround it with commas on either side of in fact. However, if it's at the beginning of the sentence, you're going to just put the comma after, or if it was at the end, you'd put the comma just before. On the other hand, comma, I don't think she will join us. On the other hand, it's just, it's a nice transitionary phrase. We don't need it in the sentence, and so we're going to put a comma after it. If I had said, I don't think she will join us, on the other hand, I would just put the comma before on the other hand. And finally, we have what are called conjunctive adverbs. And without much explanation, these are just words like however, moreover, furthermore, consequently. And when we have them, we're going to use commas. It will depend on how they show up in the sentence. And so I'm going to give you both examples here. I, however, am not convinced this is a good idea. If it's just one sentence and the conjunctive adverb is in the middle of it, just like everything above, you're going to put commas around it. Sometimes, though, a conjunctive adverb will start a new sentence that's related to the first sentence. So it says, he lost his sense of taste. Consequently, he will be staying home for a couple of weeks. When that's the case, you'll notice that there is a semicolon before the conjunctive adverb and the comma comes after it. So those are the four comma rules that you need to know to do exercise two this week. Go ahead and give that a shot. And remember that you can take it up to 20 times as you are learning your commas.